probably you this week. Um, I like the way you re, uh, rebuilt an entire office artwork this time for your background as opposed to. Oh, yeah, you know, like performance. Very, very impressive. <laughs> the evolution of society. You can do anything. You can whittle it from uh, the bark of an ancient tree. As everything was, you know, once upon a time. My grandfather, in his later years, started whittling. He's so lovely, he started whittling like animals, like a squirrel. He'd whittle a squirrel of a, of a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Bless him. Um, is Otto there? Is Otto? Yeah, we'll be. No, not yet. Okay, that's right. When he gets there. I think we're just early, that's all. Here we go. No. <coughs> Oh, man. Yeah. It's cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right, you're still poorly. You what? Alright, oh, yeah. You need the doctor's name, you know that, right? Three days. Morning, Cody. You what? Morning, I'm morning, I remember. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. I'm just in a meeting, bro. Yeah, you need to get a uh, cup, I think, a uh, doctor's note, because it's three days. Otherwise, I'll fire you. <laughs> All right, bro, see you later. <laughs> Shut up, you better and fuck off. For fuck's sake. How are you guys? How are you, Carly? What are you doing? What's going on? Good things, brother. What's been going on? Uh, dance competitions, means workshops, no babies, and he's doing a sports award. Nice. Wow, you sound more than the uh, more than usually perky, Tony. Do I? Yeah. He does perky. a little bit, yeah. You got more energy than you reckon, slaps yourself. I if I'm allowed to say that. You can must get me a uh, post wine, and I'm pretty slouchy. Post what wine? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> seven in the morning, Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> this I is who you need to educate, uh, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? You need to educate. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I'm an English idiot. Yeah, he definitely wasn't speaking English then. <laughs> no, no. Oh, well, I'm like a workshop. Okay. Retreat. Uh, Tom says she's going to be late. Who? Tom. 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 Yeah. Ten minutes. Hey Just Jennifer, how are you doing? Hey Jennifer. Good, good morning. I'm good. How are you guys? Thank you. Good. good. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm exhausted. That's what I am. What? This fucking shingles thing's got me fucking exhausted. Is it, does it tie you out? Yeah. Does it? I don't know. I don't know. Neither did I. I didn't even know it was a thing. You have shingles. Yeah, yeah. shingles. That's because you have It's because I got herpes. What's shingles? Herpes. <laughs> shingles is like a disease for old people, middle aged people who want to buy slip ons. It's herpes. Ones. That's what it is. As soon as you considered the, the Air Force One slip ons, that was the moment that shingles came. That was it. Yeah. Shingles came. Yeah, shingles like, well, what? Hey. You considered Air Force One slip ons? He still is. He still is. Flies. 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 Why would I not? The they're flies. They're not slip-ons. They're flies. It's different. Did it make old people feel cool? Yo, how are you? Hi, Nick. Only Nick. Have you got an auto subscription? No, well, let my one in here. I don't think so. Yeah, we're just discussing why I haven't been at the gym this morning okay. or this week. Because I've got shingles. What's that? Yeah, got shingles? I just thought they should be either they're busy as fuck no. or sad's a bit sick. No, no, it's well, just shingles. It's, like, um, it's run me down, but actually, why I don't want to go is because it's outside of my singlet. And like, I can't, it's contagious, right? It's herpes, like. Oh, shit. I can't. 
you can't yeah. if it's covered it's fine but if, if, you, if it touches things yeah. Yeah. Right, whatever you do don't lick just under his arm yeah <laughs> you because <laughs> oh, right. it's, like, it's a cold sore right it's the same thing yeah. so you can't touch cold sores because they but you can't catch it three times, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you're fine. I'm not worried about you. It's your, it's your son and everyone else. <laughs> I mean, I got it from you. Oh, fuck. That fuck's a cunt. Yeah. That's how he has a 20 year old son, bro. That's <laughs> 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 29. <laughs> Well, all right, it's getting out of control. This is still clients. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we're family now. Though. I do too. I feel like we're family. You get a little bit sicker, which is probably bad. <laughs> Who else have we got? Just Tonga? Yeah. Just Tonga. Dave's here now. Dave's cool. Here. All right, Dave. Hey, Dave. Well, we can crack on because Tonga's running a couple minutes late. So we can just crack on. Um, we're going to pick up off where we left off last time. We've got a bit to do in these next two sessions on campaign stuff. So I'm not really going to waste any time. We're just going to start getting into brainstorm. Again, remember, everyone butt in, jump in when you've got stuff to add. Get in the chat if you need to. I'll we'll make sure we'll get, oh, we'll get the chat up actually and send participants so we can see it. And then um, we're going to come up with some campaigns for everyone. <sighs> Nate's got the piece of paper, so maybe if you do a little bit of recap. I'm not on sure I've got... Jennifer's? Because we got somewhere with Jennifer, didn't we, around... Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we talked about a few different things. Yeah, because this, this might not be the right piece of paper. I think I've got another piece of paper. Well, we, we were looking at like yeah. throwing out ideas around like um, cooking different foods from around the world or like yeah. Sopranos food, different yeah. videos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got. Um, and you did right. I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We, where we got up to was going. It was kind of like off the will itself. Those sort of series of like. Let's do, let's take this tra these other traditions and show you the expedic making traditions, which makes sense because then you sell one particular tradition. Yeah. When you thought about that over the week, Jennifer, so, was there any like concerns about like executing on that strategy, on that idea? I don't think so. Like I thought I can, yeah, just look up different traditional recipes or go online and see who's making what or and just yeah make them say well this is traditional recipe i found from such and such a country and i'm going to try and make it um i also thought i could could do th like do that thing with traditional dishes or there's a lot of like um like grandma's making dishes or people are like this is my grandma's favorite dish yeah that's cool uh, so i could do that and i could even like on TikTok, there's all these dishes and grandma's making them, so I could attempt to make these recipes and then like, whatever you do, link to that one and say, hey, I made your dish and it worked out or it didn't or it tasted like crap or it was delicious or... Yeah. And just bring in like grandma's into it because I think I kind of got on that side of it because, I don't know, it seems like everybody like cooks with the grandmas or the grandmas always have the best cooking when they're growing up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I could do it that way or same with the traditional recipes either. I don't know, whichever yeah. um, we think would be better. I think um, for me, it, it's just, we just need to ideate the thing that it's missing, which is like the catch point. Like there's no, like it's just, otherwise just a recipe show. And there's a, right, a bajillion yeah, yeah. recipe shows. Like cooking these tradition things is cool. That's a story in it. But like there's no yeah. social hacking or like, you know, there's nothing for people to go for every single person to watch. Like the Soprano thing potentially, but Soprano's so old. Like have you seen Sopranos before? No, no right. exactly. So like probably doesn't have a clue even who the actors are, right? Because yeah, it's so old. That's just TV dinners and we just do it on TV shows. What the TV shows are going to be yeah, but I think, it, yeah, no, I agree. I, but I think, like, there's, like, a, I think there's a, some, there's the, that bit, you know, the bit that hooks the people at the beginning. Because, like, in, in Will It Sourdough, if we take that as an example, as, like, a good cooking show, it was because he was taking two crazy shit and mashing them together. If we mm -hmm. could take TV shows and mash them together, but, like, is there lots of cooking on TV shows? Like, how long would that last? Like whether you can actually see yeah. the recipe or not see the recipe, but like see the final dish. 
is that when how often is the food the hero outside of a cooking show? Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it is. For the grandma one, what I think was like famous, like famous people, the grandmas. Mm. And that's all around the food that made you famous. So, like, the food that... Because there's loads of famous people whose grandmas aren't known, but we can probably get access to them. Probably, but the effort of Jennifer doing that at the beginning yeah, is sure. fucking hard as shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. With no already built audience, yeah. it's real hard. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In, like, I could look at, um, like, all the viral videos of people's grandmas making recipes and then I can do just try and recreate those recipes or Le- leveraging leveraging there what about Maddie and uh Nona and Maddie or Nona and Maddie do you know that one like it's like a maybe an Australian uh uh girl and her, and her grandma and like she just introduces her to new things all the time and the grandma's just like full-on traditional Italian She's like, why are you doing this to me? Like, oh, it's, it's <laughs> kind of quite engaging. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I do. I know that. I, I don't like, even see that one. To, okay, I'm sorry, Roman. I just thought it might be easier to do. Mm. Um, if it's one person okay, and okay. the tag is the, the one person uh, rather than trying to find dozens of grandmas. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I had an idea, um, uh, Jen, in terms of like your kids coming to you. And being like, Mom, I want nuggets tonight. And like, how do you then take salmon and like make really tasty nuggets? Or it's like, Mom, I want this tonight. And like, the the, the theme for every stuff. meal that you're making, uh, like, has got to include like something from the wee smokehouse. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, salmon because that's not the only thing that you guys do. Um, but to uh, and then like you could try and do like you know. How do you do it? Uh, like spins on like a classic, uh, like a classic. I don't know beef Wellington. Like do a salmon Wellington. Um, you know for for you to do, and then like the evolution of that is like when you do get a chef, it's like cool. Like you rock up at the restaurant and you're like, hey chef, here's the salmon. Do something cool with it, and then you talk about it. Um, but I just thought of something like quite easy where like you have to make meals every single day uh, for the family. Um, unless you're, uh, I'm assuming your partner also gets stuck in, so you could also maybe get stuck in on the the, the, the creation side where it's like, and often with little kids, um, meal times are dictated by what the little kids want to eat. So it's like, okay, cool, they want this. Like, how do we actually like make that with, you know, <laughs> something ridiculous like salmon? Um, yeah, just as a thought. Yeah, or I could do yeah, just yeah, cooking. I can incorporate the kids into the cooking for sure. Um, I always just make what I want and they have to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Traditional. <laughs> Traditional. <laughs> um, but yeah, that can work. Uh, You're really like, I don't know if we should do salmon every meal all the time. What was that? Yeah. What was that, Erin? I like the idea of making my kids lunches every day with salmon. Yeah, yeah, that was cool too. (laughs) It's good because it's emotional. Like it's triggering. It's like, oh, I don't send them to school with salmon. Yeah. (laughs) What the shit? Like, it's triggering automatically. Oh, what? uh, Thank you, Brian. Yeah. (laughs) What about a catch and cook? I'm just having a look at your socials. You got venison, salmon, duck. You got a whole lot of hunters out there, and I like watching catch and cook. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Rod one six gets to go hunting. <laughs> Soon here, I'll bring you some venison. You can smoke it up, and I'll watch myself eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, that could work, but it could be a lot of work going out and doing of the whole cooking thing. Another thing I was thinking of. Well, I mean, if it was the recipes or doing the grandma thing or the kids things, um, I wouldn't want the recipes to, to be like too crazy intricate. Yeah. I'd have to definitely make sure I could find all the ingredients and do all the cooking and things. Um, but most of it should be easy. It's, it's pretty easy to find a lot of different things in New Zealand. Um, 
I could make traditional like traditional recipes or granny recipes and then like feed them to my kids and my husband and show what they think of it. Um, there's a I can't remember the name of it, but there was one uh, other account that she would make all these things and then she'd show like her husband taste testing them and whether he liked it or not and and that seemed pretty popular but um with those traditional recipes are you thinking with salmon or just like any traditional recipes all all traditional recipes um because i think uh you do i don't know if i can i mean i'm sure there's a lot of recipes out there with salmon in it but to show different things with like chicken or beef or lamb or rabbit or all these other um, dishes. It just gives me so much more range, I think, to do rather than just salmon to start with. And then you can throw salmon and things in there. Yeah. My my concern my concern is there's no catch like the the probably the one of the best catch is like the triggering lunchbox mm. one because there's like two bits mm. to that there's like the traditional wife sort of thing mum plus trad wife trend and uh, people going fuck which like my kids would never get that sort of thing I'd never do that for yeah, them it wouldn't even be like my kids would be like I don't even get lunch yeah I don't even I don't even get a lunch like that <laughs> exactly I'm um, like that's right it could be like I could just be making lunches for my kids or lunches for my husband or and do like all the bougie things that would that yeah. that one's yeah. that one's good yeah i think it's also your target market in a way as well that's right yes yeah, yeah. in a totally different tangent i was watching the ones where you're cutting the salmon and then you don't do anything with the skin and i i want to pick up the skin and do something <laughs> <laughs> do you, what do you do with it? You can fry well, it. Well, usually, bake it. um, it's just leftovers and gotten rid of. But once in a while, when I'm feeling really uh, into doing things, um, which I just fry it up. It's like salmon crackle, like pork crackle. Yeah. It comes out of. It's really good. Um, there's a like long term. Like, there's lots of ideas here we've got that could be like long term. Like, you know, bonus sort of content things but there, for this one there's a um there's a guy here in auckland called, uh, his brand's called official and he takes salmon skin and turns it into leather and then he makes wallets and watch straps and all sorts of stuff out of it um and yeah. he's got a full like salmon tannery fucking like leather um up here in auckland um he used to work for the fisheries and he saw all this stuff going to waste and he's like surely there's something you can do with all the skin and then he found these guys overseas who are making leather out of it and he's like his wallets are yeah. fucking awesome like they look so good and like he like you know because like the salmon skin color is like pretty cool like it's all different colors and different stuff like that so anyway they're saying there yeah, that you could go if you're making enough salmon and you're showing the preparation, people might like roam and say, fuck, what are you doing with all that skin? And then you could make it a story arc to go see this guy. Yeah. Taking your skin, right? Yeah, and so you do cool. something sustainable with yeah. it. Because his whole yeah, mission is to stop the waste. Like, how do we use more of the animals? Yeah. 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 What I was thinking of doing, because that salmon crackle is so good, is keeping all of our skins and then you need more skins from all the other salmon farms and just finding somebody um, to turn it into like salmon crackle, like pork crackle and sell it and just have another product. Oh yeah. That would be, that, that'd, yeah. That'd be an awesome product. Like, I love pork crackle and yeah. I buy it from the shop. I always feel guilty because it's pork. Not that I, not that I don't yeah. eat meat, but it's just like, it's got that association of being really unhealthy where a salmon crackle would do the same job for me and it wouldn't have the association of being wow, just yeah. lardy. But that would be awesome to do a fucking bag of salmon crackle in the can can. Yeah. Like, I've, I've it's got, got a video on... It's got to make healthy. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Can we just spend, like, a baby, um, anyway. like... Can we spend like five or six minutes just thinking of something else, just in case, just to explore other random ideas, like, completely off cooking? So for everyone, like, is there anything else... I just don't want to be locked in on saying, and then we go, and I want this for everyone to think, like, if we get too stuck on one idea that yeah. none of us have fully sold on. I really like, and always go back to, like, those kind of, like, the 
two bears, one cave, those just like two people doing a random podcast of just talking to each other. I found one. Um, it's called I've Had It, and it's just these two southern kind of ladies just talking about anything and everything, and they're just hilarious. And that's it's definitely something, if it doesn't turn out to into what I do now as a campaign, something I'd like to look into in the future of doing like a podcast or something like that, or the, it's called Table Manners, and it's, I can't remember the name of it, there's two ladies, and they invite these different celebrities over, and they, it's just, they have a meal, but they, they talk more to the celebrity or the person that they kind of interview, and it's just really kind of laid back and just mm. um, natural them talking about it. That's something that I always keep coming back to. I, I think um, those kind of things. I think that that the podcast idea is a cool idea, and it's it, there's a element of it being quite hard to admin and stuff. But if we did it as like a slow burn to begin, while you did everything else, you know, and it has yeah. it had its own product, and you just did it. Like the the reason I'd rather you do that is because because of how much work it actually is to run a podcast. As simple as it sounds, it, it takes a lot of administration. Um, yeah. You don't want the pressure on yourself because otherwise you'll get you won't like it and then you'll get over it and then you won't do and then it won't work and then you know fall apart and then all the waste of time. So as yeah. good as it sounds, it like it always inevitably falls over. So you could still do one. Like I think there's something quite cool for your positioning as a traditional sort of food source to have people who are like at the top of their game because there's like a bit of a juxtaposition there of like you have the traditional cooking way but then there's these shit the top chefs and well like, like you know around the country even and even like getting people who hunt and fish who've got big followings to come on and you get these people at the top of the game which sort of goes oh i might just be a traditional product thing but i'm as good as these guys who are the best at their business you know so it sort of links you with them without having to say anything does that make sense it's kind of like with my podcast with the creators like I don't have to be a good creator, but because I talk to all the creators, like lots of brands think that we're in the center of the world of creators, that they associate all the creators to me. <clears throat> and so it's the same yeah. thing. Like you can have all these like top chefs and other people that are like premium, which you get their premiumness attached to your brand, even though you're a more traditional product, which doesn't always come across as like a high flying sort of item. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So then, I mean, I don't know if they'd have to go, well, back to the recipe thing then again or something I do, I could find just different recipes that they do and then make them and then I don't start think, building I, that kind of... I don't think you need to worry about it. I reckon like if like you're starting a podcast, you just start, you just ask as many people as you can. You'll start to find guests. It's just a lot of administration work. You'll get them on regardless. The, yeah. you you watch a you listen and watch a podcast rather like for the conversation mostly you can have a visual gag of you guys eating in it but you don't don't yeah don't spend a bunch of time and effort trying to make their food because like you with just that, won't do um, it you just won't do it it'll get too hard would that be more or less interesting if yeah. it was like the chefs talked about the way that their grandma or their tradition yeah thought, yeah like, for sure. Them how to the base of how they did their food yeah that definitely has to be the topic yeah. of discussion yeah yeah, yeah I agreed. Um, can we just like quickly like because that's good and we can develop that out that's I think we should keep that on the table and I like the lunchbox ones but I just want to see if there's something else in case we miss something like another way of bringing you to life it's maybe exploring exploring other traditional ways like in other different industries like traditional woodworking or traditional um, tea ceremonies or traditional, you know, as long as it's, they're everywhere, yeah. um, and a lot of that really well known, you know, so it could be a lot of fun to sort of share these with people as content, I, um, traditional, yeah. traditional values, sort of lifestyle, well, I mean, it could, it could be as easy to make it, I guess, or as complex as you make it, but, mm. and how you present it, whether it's, yeah, a short snippet, with a few static images, and had a voiceover or something, or but yeah, I mean, that, that would be interesting. I'd watch that. What about the process of smoking? A lot of my mates they love barbecues and smoking meat, they just love it. And we go around and have some beers, and just the process. I had a little look at your account, I didn't see, I saw a little bit of like 
of you cutting up and stuff, but I feel the, ho the whole process, it's a, you know, it's traditional, but it's also a lot of, a lot of manly men, they, they love that <laughs> shit. I love eating it and I'll go and have the beers, but I'm not, you know, but I'm, I'm not a massive, massive fan, but man, it tastes so good. But the, the process of it, guys, they really like yeah. it. Yeah. It's a whole culture around it. Yeah. yeah. So something around the mm, yeah. I bet your guys gear and your equipment's cool I bet there's a way to get an angle on that get your husband involved somehow I'm not sure what are you going to say Jenny? Oh, just like something around um, speak up so they can hear like something around strangers so I don't have the concept but um, the whole concept of family bringing people in and all of that is there a way that you can like and probably not invite strangers into your home but invite strangers to do something because it's like the connection piece like the community <coughs> like maybe like a street stall yeah <coughs> a street stall to get people to try smoke salmon because like possibly but there's like plenty of people who don't eat smoked foods yeah. you know like yeah. like mm -hmm. I love like raw salmon but I'm not a big fan of smoked salmon you know so like but you might give me something that I'm like, oh, actually, this is fucking good. I've just had shit stuff before, maybe, you know? So, is there a way, like, there's um that guy in South Africa who does the, he does the table in the middle of the field in South Africa. Uh, he does a table in the middle of South Africa, and he just has, like, a sign coming up, just like, um, right. come talk to me if yeah. you're bored, kind of thing. Like, and then people just come random and tell him random stories. And they're, they're real funny, because he's a comedian. But... Yours thing could be like, come sit down and have some salmon with me or come sit down and have some venison with me or something like that and getting their reaction of trying yeah. but also getting their random stories about their grandparents, what their favorite foods were. <clears throat> yeah, mine, mine was similar to that in that it was like, um, what, what are our cultural similarities? Mm. Um, you know, when you, when you meet a stranger, but what are, the, what, are the what are the traditional similarities which would go back to family, um, food, community, and trying to weave those, like making strangers become part of your whānau almost through, mm. through food. Yeah, discussions and things. Mm. Um, but I, I love that idea of, I actually seen it, where was I? I was in some mall the other day and there was just a guy sitting down there with a chessboard and he had a note, come play me if you want to. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's that kind of, and there's that DJ that sits in a park somewhere, yeah, and you yeah. know, if you're feeling good, yeah. come and come and listen, or come and jam with me. So that could be that could be cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Jennifer, yeah. do you have a cam? Do you have what sort of camera equipment do you have? <clears throat> um, I've got my iPhone. I've got a few DSLRs, which I might need to get batteries for. Um. <laughs> Um, That's about it, I think. And do you have anyone else to help thoughts. make content with you? Uh, I could potentially try and enlist my mother-in-law or somebody. Because <clears throat> like that concept, no, like, that concept would require someone to watch the cameras. Because like, you know, you would be it's sitting. still New Zealand, like. <laughs> Yeah. Someone filming, yeah. someone yeah. stealing it. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone's still running gravy camera as you're sitting off in the field, like in the, because you know, the camera's not next to you. <clears throat> um, so, but, it's free salmon. but also you want someone just to make sure. So there'll be two things for that setup. It's actually not that much work because yeah. um, you don't need to, it, like you don't need to coordinate guests. You can, like if you can coordinate guests, it's even better actually, but you don't have to. You can just go sit in the field and like, wait for randoms. The hardest thing in New Zealand is that yeah. New Zealanders are dickheads and they don't like to interact with strangers because they're, yeah. they're all too up, uh, scared of themselves. So you might want to like initiate it with a couple of guests coming in. Like you, you invite, you tell some friends and stuff, come and have some, come to this thing. And then that might encourage yeah. others to do it. But you will need someone on cameras. You will need someone there. And you'll mm -hmm. need mics. You'll need some... Um, like wireless mics to do it. Like we use the Rode wireless, but there's a few different brands, but they're about five or 700 bucks or something for a set of them. And you'll need that because- Oh uh, yeah, I've got oh, yeah. <clears throat> a little set um, that like plug into my phone. Oh yeah, and the wireless? Mics. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool, perfect, yeah. So you just need that. So you get the audio. Um, that's probably the most important yeah. part. I was thinking like, 
communities in terms of like I'm thinking sports. So the food that exists in sports. So like when you go to a netball game, like you go and you go to the stall and you get hot chips, or you whatever, or you, like even like a budding snag. Imagine you like did a fundraiser thing, but actually every snag is like got a side of salmon. It's like that community uh, thing where yeah. people know they're about to do this thing, but then you bring them closer. With so yeah. like double it up at those things. So do yeah. this not in a random place, but yeah, do it at a sports event. Sports yeah. Well. Sports yeah, that could work. Like it, it kind of is reminds me of the bougie lunch boxes where it's like, oh, we're at a sports game. Like it's supposed to be fried, like just microwave, like pies and all of this shit. That yeah, you get a sausage and bread with like salmon, ke- uh, salmon roe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some salmon roe on your sausage with the onions. And then everyone would just be like surprised, I guess. That's quite funny. Like, yeah, that's quite cool. Like a community thing, even a markets place, Mm -hmm. like a, like a food market still in a stool there rather than like, but rather than just selling, having a place people can come sit and eat as well. Mm -hmm. Still have the story element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that could be the podcast and the thing all done in one. So you have like the bougie lunch thing plus the podcast all done in one event sort of thing. Mm. Do you do any event stuff, yeah. any market things or any community or do um, kids play sport? In... No, they don't yet. Yet. Um, they do nothing. They do nothing. <laughs> um, I've got... That's salty. Uh, <laughs> we do markets coming up in November. Um, but there is a local market here every weekend. Um, what, what, I am heading up to Auckland in July for five days to do tastings at all the different Faro Freshes. What was that, Erin? Pardon me. The Mexicana Market. Mm. Ah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Uh, hour or so out of Auckland, isn't it? Yeah. Out of? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, um, but otherwise, yeah, I've got markets down south here that I'm signed up for, but not in the near future. But that local market I'll test out. Where, whereabouts are you? Where, where do you live again? Ashburton, rural mid Canterbury. Canterbury. Amongst all the farmers. Yeah. So it's a bit of a travel to get to somewhere where there's people who would randomly sit somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Have, um, I could potentially do it in Geraldine 20 minutes away. There's touristy, tourists come through on the weekends there. Um, unless yeah. I went up to Christchurch. You've got the A&P show later on this year. Where's that? It's in Canterbury somewhere. Oh, okay. In September, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I think what we do is we'll <clears throat> let us park this because we we'll do a little bit more deep deep dive into these. I think the I think the easy one to get going with, like you could probably trial in the next few weeks, is actually the lunchbox one. So we could like find some yeah. things about that, and then we could sort of over this next few weeks plan out the um, the table one, however that looks, and then we just find an event to go do it at, and we'll just do one first filming with you in this next during this cohort period, so you can film one, edit it, and we we can all review it, and we can just see like is it right, you know, is it the right thing? Yeah. But the the bougie lunchbox yeah. thing is a is a winner if we can get it right. I think the hardest thing is going to be able to find the visual style to make sure it lands, and getting you be at confident yeah. to go film it yourself. So I think we probably need to find some like um, uh, references, references for you to go. This is how it needs to be developed and filmed, um, and yeah. how it is, and what the catches are. But I think what we'll do is I think those are good. I'm 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 happy with them. I think what we need to do as a team, as part of this process, is still to develop this idea out because it's it's still got a bit more. But I don't want to sit on it for too long because if once we're stuck, we're stuck. And I know this. Yeah. Looking at the blank faces of Nate and Joni. Does it smoke? Would that be crazy? Would that be dumb? Like if you got fruits and you smoked fruits. Like does it smoke? Yeah. I like does it smoke. It does it too long? <coughs> it's, I, I don't know what the process is actually. Like, I'm, honestly, I don't know. 
So, but I just I remember you talking about like the equipment must be cool or whatever. Like if you if you <clears throat> cut let's say an orange the it, same way you cut a salmon or like skin the thing and then you it smoke does. It. People do do that. Like smoked watermelon, I've seen done, <laughs> and it comes out looking like pork. Smoked watermelon. Oh yeah. It comes out looking like a pork roast. Yeah, it looks yeah. real fleshy. Then at least it's within her own. Like, does it does it smoke will work? Hundred percent will work. That's a good idea. Yeah. Does it smoke will definitely yeah. work because you could even do stuff like a Big Mac. Yeah, a bunch of stuff, anything, pizza. Does a Big Mac smoke? Yeah, that's right. You yeah. could. That'd be easy enough to do because I've got cold smoker or a hot smoker if I want to try and cook things as well. I've got both kinds of smokers I can do. Yeah. Like microwave pies. Is it hot smoke? Yeah. And just different, yeah, different things. Vegetables. Different food yeah. products. Yeah. And Daesh brought it's up crazy. last week the mukbang idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, man, I wanted to say it. I was like, man, I should have said it. And he like smoke stuff and you just have random people just, eating, just it. eating it. Everyone just eating it. Yeah. People silence. love watching this. Shit. You could have a whole nother yeah. channel that's just like the We Smokehouse um, Mukbang channel. Yeah, just random yeah. shit you smoke and you just eat it. Eat, eat lit food. Um, you know, just, like it's weird, but watching him eat the sort of most full on kind of fattiest fried chicken burger, it's just like, oh, that's kind of as good as actually going and having it. <laughs> like, I, don't need, I, don't need, yeah. I don't need to do that to myself anymore. I could just watch him do it. Like, I don't know what the thing is about that. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is something really nice about that. Uh, just, so I think it still has that connection. You know, I was like just looking in the, um, in the book here about the, the values, the smokehouse. It's about... Um, the enemies of discrimination and a fast-paced life and stuff. And so, yeah, maybe actually putting the enemy in there and, like, actually, like, yeah, fast foods or smoking a burger. Um, but people, watching people eat it is kind of interesting as well, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Just a quite primal um, idea. You could, you could yeah. send smoked meats to random people, random influencers. Yeah. They get it, but they just have to film themselves eating it. Yeah, you know, there's definitely influence strategy yeah. there. My wife would 100% do it. She does some. She just did some shit for Auckland Museum the other day, and mm -hmm. she, like people like that, like micro influencers or whoever. They'll all the food influencers who do <coughs> that shit, all of them. Yeah. If we sent them product, yeah. it just depends on the cost of you sending product because your product's probably not a cheap product, like it's a premium product. But definitely, influencer stuff, they'll take it, especially food. Like. <laughs> Um, there's that Māori girl, I think you've had her on the yeah. podcast that sits in her car and eats. Like, I love watching her stuff. Yeah, Māori food bag. And it's, yeah, such an easy setup too. Like, she just, I guess she just drives to the restaurant, pipes up in her car and has a munch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She's in, um, she's in Brisbane at the moment, but I mean, she's living there now, but you can still, if you could get it to her. But I was thinking like, Daz is cooked and his pies. Oh yeah, and if you ended up putting it in... Like do collabs with people who actually make food. Like, do you know Daz is Cooked? Have you watched him on TikTok? So, no. Yeah, so he owns a pie shop called Ashby Pies here in, um, in St. Helier's. And they're f epic pies. And um, he puts random stuff. Like his steak and cheese is a beef cheek and bechamel. Oh yeah. Because he doesn't do a steak and cheese. He's like, nah, this is way better. <laughs> like, and, so he, like, and he does like a <laughs> Korean fried chicken burger. Um, stuff like that. Ah, oh, burger, uh, pie. pie. So you could do something. He, he he loves a collab. He did a lobster pie the other day at, for a pub and sold it out at fifty bucks a pie. And they sold out the whole night. They sold out two weeks prior mm. for He's the night. His pies are fucking. His pies are yeah. fucking good. Yeah. Burger joints with collab as well. Yeah, we've got a few people we know who will do collabs. Like we know a few, <laughs> got a few clients who'll do yeah. some crazy shit. But I think I think the Willet Smoke thing's a good one. The Willet Smoke and the Lunchbox ones are my two favourites so far. Yeah. I think because they're easy to yeah, do. Because yeah, the smoking the ones, so easy. Yeah. yeah. The Willet Smoke's so easy actually, because yeah. you already have all the equipment and stuff. That's right. Yeah. You don't have to rely on other people. And it's easy yeah. enough to feed it for the people. Yeah, and exactly, you don't have to rely on anyone else. Yeah. So that could be your <laughs> fuck yeah. That could be like your um your evergreen content that keeps coming out. That's your thing. 
is the will it mm-hmm. smoke and pay, maybe you could probably do that and the bougie lunch boxes together and see which yeah. one catches first and if they both catch awesome and if only one catches cool kill the other one yeah 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 for sure so why don't we just keep put those down like because these so as we go through this together guys like the reason of doing this one of the things we thought as a group these ideas are going to keep coming up we're going to go we're going to do say like tonga's stuff and then ideas will come and we go actually we should have used that for jennifer's one and so we it's just because your turn finishes or it's not your turn doesn't mean it's not your turn right like keep all the stuff in the back of your mind because that's we're actually getting more ideas out because we're all getting everyone's ideas and things can cross yeah. over a lot. So we might um, move on to the next person just because I'm wary of time. It's already 8.37 and I want to make sure we get through at least half of the group today. Yep. So yeah. who, we even got an order. Who wants to go next? First in, first served. Yep, there we go, I'll Roman. Begin. Cool. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go. Have you got any thoughts or feelings so far before we start in a direction, or do you want us to just go crazy? Um, I like how-to videos um, quite a bit, and um, it's, it's kind of part of the brand a little bit. Like, I'm going to speak about the how-to as a replacement of an essay. Um, so it kind of matches um, if I was to sort of do how-to videos, and if my students ever take the mickey out of me somehow they always do a how-to video like how to make coffee or something like that mm. um i also kind of um around 2013 through to 2015 i was always doing this thing where i'd get everyone in the room to take out their phone and then do a recording so it's called like a, a video train or um so they, they take out their phone because basically um, as a teacher i was finding that um it's very suddenly very hard around that time like all students had phones so many of the professors were like just banning people and i thought oh, i think we can do something with this and uh so i got them to record um like a kind of an almost like a video game where they need to there's one person that they're tracking and have to keep them in the frame <laughs> so they have to keep um each other in frame and they're like one person will just kind of run off and then it becomes this cool kind of video train so it's, it's pretty interesting to watch um and I guess when TikTok sort of started becoming a thing, I thought, fuck, this is going to go off on TikTok when um, doing doing a video train. Um, at the same time, it's not very easy to um, coordinate that. Uh, you're getting, getting the um, high-quality videos. I did notice that Descript bought, um, uh, what's it called, like Team uh, Record, and so now that's part of Descript. So it might actually be a bit technically easier. Um, to send people a link, do a performance, um, and then and then go with that. But that might be just like a one kind of thing. But I yeah I like I like chess videos. I like screen recordings. I like Mark Heath Brownlee. I like the tech review thing. Um, I like the guy with the bike with the video camera in New York. Mm, um, yeah, he's cool. He's, he's, he just goes to galleries and kind of geeks out on art. Mm. And um, he got to a certain point where like. At first, it was like, we don't want you in the gallery. And then by, at a certain point, it was like, he's the most important critic. And he just goes around and goes, oh, look at this. I don't know what they're doing, but it looks amazing. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I do, I genuinely I love that kind of stuff. Tricky thing with that is that there's just, you know, maybe there's five shows in Auckland at a time, so it's a bit harder. Um, it's not over like 50 shows opening at a night, but I love that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. I really like <clears throat> in the art world there's some stuff that I've seen on TikTok is um, the guys who get their art into places that it shouldn't be you know like they put they put their art and they just go and put them in like <clears throat> I watched a guy <clears throat> sorry the London uh, what's the one in the Trafalgar Square the museum uh, yeah anyway in one of the museums in London he like got his piece of artwork on the wall with a plaque and he was just wearing a high vis, and they just let him do it. And like, <laughs> the security just walked past and like, hey mate, how are you? Like, <laughs> like kept on going. And there was a guy in New Zealand in Auckland who did it too. He did it at the Auckland Art Gallery, I think it was. Yeah. And he put his he same thing, high vis, put his artwork on the wall, and then just go away. And it went off. I think I think he'd never came out who he was because like, yeah, ah, uh, he'd probably get in trouble. Yeah. Um, but there's that side of it. Like. I really like that, like getting your art somewhere it shouldn't without people knowing. 
and then seeing if they re- they figure it out is really funny. Um, and then I like the stuff that uh, Mischief does. Do you do you worry, do you watch Mischief at all, Roman? So M- Mischief, yeah. it's spelled M S C H F, I think, something like that. Um, but they do like these art installations that look like they're uh, like a retail e-commerce sort of thing. They like pretend to make a product or whatever. <laughs> they did a um, oh yeah no I do know this. yeah they did some cool stuff like they did a PT cruiser that they bought in New York and they sent like fifty people the keys to it so fifty people had a key to this car and at any time you could text a number and get the coordinates of it and then you could just go grab the car and take off so someone could be driving it park up to go to a shop and then they come out and you've taken the car and then like you're like fuck and then so if you leave something in the car it's gone because someone else got the car and you have to go track it down and try to find it and they made a whole series of it on youtube and, and then they did the other one which was an atm that when you went and used it it showed your bank balance and then it had a it had a top 10 bank balances like so the so who like who's the richest person who's used this uh atm and i think for a long time it was diplo like diplo had like 40 million bucks in his bank account or something stupid like that so he was like number one for ages and then it just recently he got taken off because someone else went in and beat him or so but anyway my point of it is is like you take these art like, like you, you, you create these art projects that are like kind of funny but they they have some interaction in them and then you use that as the social media posts which is not too dissimilar to your train idea it's just like it's a one-off idea that you run but you make it interesting that people want to get behind and turn them into some sort of trend those are the two ones i've seen the how-to stuff's cool it's just how to's like hard how to's real hard like to make them interesting and people watch uh, i'm all for it if we can discuss that and break it down like what if you did like a how-to and then you just take anything and turn it into art oh like yeah just the most randomest things and be like this is how to turn this into a piece of art and then mm. you roman puts his magic on it and then it's up. yeah and then he can go and put it somewhere random in yeah. the city yeah yeah so someone can find it I think um, it's gonna be hard. I don't know why that's hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's also just like art projects that are, um, like you know, really cool art projects that are just unique. Like I saw one the other day of a guy who took a um, uh, hundred or I think fifty or a hundred different logos from big corporations, made a silicon mold of them, and made like a plaster version of these logos <clears throat> and sold them for like i don't know 500 bucks or something each or something but he did this whole thing where he he made this video talking about how it's illegal because he's selling logos and he couldn't really do it and he had to get his legal team in it and all this blah 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 and he made this whole big story of it they sold out in like four hours <clears throat> he did like half a million bucks or something stupid like that in like four hours and he's like i need all this money because i've got to pay my legal fees now because i've just sold these people's logos but it was like an art, he, he didn't care because he, he didn't actually do it for the money. He actually just did it for the art, like to get his name out there. He's had like 400,000 followers or something now off one one set of videos. Yeah, it's probably not true. Um, I think that when you do it with art, it's almost always fair use. It's definitely um, not true. He definitely did it as a piss take. Yeah, he definitely did. So yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, There's yeah, also... I, I mean, uh, another, I've got a list of artists that I think kind of do pretty well um, on uh, Instagram. So there's Amalia Ulman. She's probably the most... I, I didn't know that they, um, I had 100,000 followers, but Amalia Ulman, out of what... Because there's another thing that there's different kind of tiers of mm. artists. Mm. Like um, there's... People might say something, it's a, bit, it's a bit bitchy, but they might say, oh, oh yeah, he's a nice guy, but his work's not historical. Yeah. And that's kind of like... That's part of it. Um, um, I I'm aiming for that, right? So um, it is always the burden of history. Like it has to kind of click in both. I have to solve both things at once. So you know when we did the um, oh what can you be the best in the world at? Yeah. Um, uh, with art, it's kind of the burden is even harder. You have to be the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, you have to be the greatest of all time at something that probably nobody else cares about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Amalia Ullman, 
she might be the greatest of all time with Instagram for an artist. So she did a fake boob job. Like, she got fake, fake boobs. Um, <laughs> and she took people with her, like, story. And was going, oh, no, don't do this to yourself. You're beautiful, et cetera, la, la, la. And then uh, turned out the whole thing was just scripted and she made everything in Photoshop, which is um, pretty interesting. And now she just reviews water. So um, <laughs> just like gives... She said, oh, guys, I've done a certificate in um, water, I'm a water sommelier now, officially. Funny. I don't know if that's a real thing. But it is, actually. actually. That's the funniest it thing. Is. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, so she did a water sommelier course, and now she just reviews water. She's like, oh, you know, um, sorry, New Zealand Pure, it's like three out of ten, like, so, or three out of five, it's not very good. Um, I thought, so, yeah, you, I, thought you, I thought you meant she reviews bodies of water, like a river or a <laughs> lake. <laughs> this lake's like a <laughs> nine out of ten. <laughs> That's funny. It's actually very funny. Uh, yeah, so um, then there's like uh, Koki Tanaka. I wanted to share this guy with you because he is one that he's the one that I mentioned that I uh, helped to bring to New Zealand. Um, and he did a show at Art Space. And he does these kind of like videos where he just walks around and kind of responds to things like very kind of immediately so it'll be like um it would just things set up everyday items and then he will just kind of like just goes next thing and so he just does actions um and records it i could imagine that it would be the type of thing that would go pretty well and again it's, it's a little bit related to what i what i already do um so yeah, Amalia Oman, she's pretty choice. And then um, Wade Blyton, I put that one there because um, his, his paintings kind of look a little bit like what I sell. Um, these ones here. Um, yeah. And then there's, uh, there's a sort of the big kind of uh, artists who, um, they've also come to New Zealand twice, Chow Fei. Um, she sort of um, sold oh, cool. uh, her second life world. So she created a second life world and sold that. Um, and then there's like these people like um, knows this Ku is a is a um, like a dancer who does these kind of really cool interactive things. So where he'll do like some movements and he'll do blob tracking and it will like distort and, and be really interesting. But yeah, I think um, one of the key parts is to make it kind of so that I can do it in my daily life. You know, I've got a job. I'm a teacher. Yeah. I need to kind of be pretty quick. Um, yeah. The, I've got every resource you can imagine. Um, like I've probably got a similar amount of resources to attention seeker in terms of technical capability, but I don't have any time. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So we need something super simple that can just be like, I mean, it's all the most like water bucket just, level simple, like yeah. that sort of art project. Like, yeah. um, what do you call them? An endurance, an endurance art project. That's just like a day one, every day something goes up, but it's so super simple. My students. Hey. My students says I can get. <laughs> the reverse of it, eh? Yeah. My students say I can get. Or just like I mean, even process. I can make my stupid art project famous. What? Even process, no, no voice, no nothing. It's just like watching people make the thing. Yeah. It. I don't know. For some reason, it just always goes off. It always does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, is why there, not? Yeah. Is there a thing that you can do where it's like you're not sure what the outcome is? Like when people do those things, like when they do it every day, they'll do something like I don't know, throw something at the wall, and then it's different every day. But what the whole video is Rem what ten seconds? R Roman is that chef um, uh, who does that uh, review of like everyday cooks that like will be their uh, their food, and then uh, you know, like he literally oh yeah, like, always yeah. shouts. Like he's always shouting and swearing. He's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" Um, so, like, uh, I was just thinking in terms of like ease of use and also potentially that you don't actually need to generate the content. Like, you know, you just find people doing art, and then you could just like review it and be like, "Oh, cool technique," or like, "This guy's a complete monkey." Um, um, you know, like those kind of things, um, and maybe develop a, like a little bit of a kind of personality around that. Um, yeah, it could be like global as well, right? So we limited to shows. Yeah, yeah. People, I don't know. I mean, it might be interesting, but um, 
I'll be so judgmental. Like, I, I, maybe it's too bad. But isn't that like, isn't that like what people like, Roman? Is you, you know, watching people that have opinions. Um, yeah. You know, like you think of, um, I mean, like uh, going back to the chef analogy, like Gordon Ramsay, like the guy's a complete idiot, but everyone watches him because he's got such a hardline opinion. You know, and he's very happy to call someone out and be like, oh, this is complete dog shit. Like, um, you, you know, like those kind of things. I think that, the hard Roman's thing about like, it is that, like, it, when you look at the, what Roman's got is, is, um, you know, like his why and purpose and all the things we went through, just like criticizing people for their art is probably not it. Because like yeah. art's so yeah, subjective I'm anyway. The opposite yeah. Way. Like, yeah. Um, I I fully identify. Like I might be completely fucking wrong, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I I go no no no. I'm at the top tier. <laughs> I'm working at this level. I'm expecting to be written about in the future, but I don't want to diminish anyone who does make it to that level yeah. at all. Yeah. Like in fact. If I really do believe that, I should be able to hold my own in that space where it is kind of like, you know, um, your yeah. grandma's watercolor. Yeah. Whatever. Like I should work. Um, yeah, agree. So, yeah, I, I think I don't want to. I don't want to be like. I don't want to be rude. I will fully be rude uh, with my friends um, about it, but I think it's not the right thing for public for my values. Eh? Yeah, yeah. But, but I can see it would work. Uh, what yeah, about what about doing the spin on like you know like cool like. Um, you know, the, the art is like, you know, a 6 out of 10, but like here's an opportunity and here's the things that like us as pros do to like level this up. Um, like just as a thought, so like, you know, you then have a whole bunch of young aspiring artists that are like, oh cool, I can watch Roman critique some art and then, you know, give us his uh, uh, experience um, uh, and expertise on how you would, you know, take this from a you know, a piece that doesn't sell to, you know, an iconic piece that could potentially be hung in a gallery one day. The, the hard thing with it is, like, in, on yeah. social, doing that sort of stuff on social media is, like, counterintuitive if you don't already have the big following because it doesn't matter how good your artist you are, if you're on social media, you're only good if you've got the following on social, on the social platform. You might be really good in real life, like, Roman's an excellent artist, but then on social media, if he doesn't have 200,000 followers to those people that he's reviewing they're like who the fuck are you bro like you got nothing you know and so then it, therefore his opinion doesn't really matter and is he really a pro because and then so like it becomes a real negative spiral it's something you could do once you've built the audience on those social platforms you can be an art critique if it's in like a published magazine or like something that has already the credibility but like on social if you're going to do that and you've got 400 followers and you're like criticizes some dude for his art who's got 20,000 followers you're gonna be like i don't give a fuck what you think like look at look where i'm at like Definitely, definitely, hundred percent. Like, there's, there's kind of, you know, value through the populism or value through, yep. like, uh, uh, yep. you know, rarity. And it's kind of weird because they're the same paradox. Um, you know, this is very rare. No one likes this. Therefore, it must be amazing. <laughs> so it, 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 it's sort of slightly funny. Uh, but if you can be, you know, um, famous and then no one likes it, that's the best possible thing. Uh, so because it'll, uh, you know, crystallize later, as long as it actually is good as well. Yeah. Um, you know, like, uh, there's, there's so many things that, like, little publicity stunts that artists have done. One of my favorites with this one is Maurizio Catalan. I don't know if you know this guy. He basically stole paintings. His first kind of gig was, was got a show in an amazing gallery and didn't do any work and then stole paintings from a gallery down the road and then resold them for much more than they were going for and then, um, I don't know whether he paid the other artists or not, but it's a it's a it's a trick, eh? So um, this kind of um, another famous one is the banana, right? So uh, it's banana not actually taped to the wall, but looks like it's taped to the wall, um, and then uh, it's called comedian, and people can pull a banana and then and then eat it, and it's like sold for two hundred thousand dollars or something. Mm. So um, yeah, this kind of performance works. They can be amazing, but even those didn't do so well on social. I know it's like, mm. it's weird, like, mm. it was incredible maybe 20 years ago, but I do feel like, and it's kind of one of the reasons I'm here, just even just to understand it, like, the whole game has shifted. It's completely different now. Well, oh. I mean, like, what if you steal your students' stuff and then make art of it and then give it back to them? <laughs> oh, that's what you do. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, you see them every day, and, like, it's quite funny, like, if you are trying to 
film yourself like trying to steal like some kid's pen or whatever. <laughs> trying to steal the artwork. What if you'd applied the rules of art to just like, all everyday shit? Who's that woman who like, does the thing with food where she like over... Is she? Over critiques. Talks about like shit food in a way that she's a restaurateur or... Uh, critiques everyday items, you mean? Yeah, but if you critique everyday shit, like um, even news or whatever's <coughs> happening as, as in the way of you critique an art piece, would that be a <coughs> kind of ludicrous thing to do? <coughs> Critique, can you say it? Critiquing just everyday shit, day. like normal shit, like everything's art. I love it. Yeah. So just critiquing fake like things or I don't know, like fucking new, like politics or whatever, but you do it all in the, like as if you see everything as art. Like if you saw somebody like park their car a little crazy. Yeah, or some tradies like, doing something. Like or... art piece. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like. Like that angle of reflection is something like that, yeah. It's just ludicrous. <laughs> you're lovable, like you're the lovable person and you're just like yeah. completely everything is art. Even going up to tradies and talking about the building they're making or, you know what I mean? Like actually interacting with people around like getting coffee from a, a cafe and you talk to the person about it. I don't know, just some way to yeah. like, everything just yeah. like, like stupidly all about art. Yeah. Because it's really easy to do. It's really easy to repeat. <laughs> And you can get people involved that will be like, what the fuck are you talking about, you idiot? Yeah. Like, even someone parking their car, just go up to them and go, the way you touch your car was da da da. Just use that real extreme art language. Mm-hmm. And just freak people yeah. out. They'll be like, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's funny. Yeah. Just everyday like shit it. becomes like, you just treat it as it's an amazing piece of artwork and they've done the most incredible yeah. thing and you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. Can I get your walk off? I don't know, whatever. You know, like, just really ludicrous. There was that. Oh, off and a buy it. Yeah, that's <laughs> fuck, that's it. Oh, nice. That's wow. it. That's so good. Yeah, off and buy it. Shit, people do. That's awesome. Nah, that's it. That's a linchpin. That's it. Yeah, that's funny as fuck. That's actually it. Yeah. Can I ask you what you offer as basically you will buy some type of piece of that once? Yeah. And you just offer ridiculous amounts of money. Like, can I buy this? Can I buy this park car for 800 grand? Yeah. <laughs> Can we auction? Can we auction this car? Yeah, I have to believe it though. I think that's yeah, the main. Yeah, thing. yeah. Oh, no, you I, have to. You can pull that off. Like, you can pull that off. That's the lovable part. Like you just actually see everything as fucking art. That's, that's so true. true. <laughs> passion, you know? passion that comes through everything that you see. The way the way you see things. It'll be a great practice as well as an artist, surely. Another, <laughs> another funny thing you do is go to auctioneers and go, I want to sell this. Oh, yeah. Like, go to auctioneers and go, I want to sell this piece. Or, you know what I mean? Like, do it the, that other way around. As well as ask people to buy it, go to auctioneers and try and sell the things that you, like, these stupid things that are just normal. And I think, I think the language is, Video. like, we need to not yeah. use, especially for romance, it's not, it's not stupid things. It's, I actually just see art everywhere. Yeah. And I've seen this thing. It is really beautiful, or like the way this thing has been arranged, or whatever. And then you you critique it, and then yeah. you offer that. Yeah. So it kind of looks like this is ridiculous that he's offering this sort of money. I mean, the money bit's f- like fake. Obviously, you're just like doing it for the shits and gigs. But the actual art, the actual thing you see, is really cool. And you're like, this is great because then what you can do is then you can slowly dip in real art, you know. And people, and you get into this like. Um, Gene Wilder playing um, Willy Wonka, not really knowing if he's lying or telling the truth in the movie, right? It's that concept of like, is this actually art now or is it not really art? And so you build this channel of like, are you reviewing something that's just random or something that's real? And then eventually you can like bleed in your own art (laughs) and be like, oh, I'm only going to offer you a dollar. Okay, yeah, it is very interesting. So <laughs> you can tell your students to look at shit like that as well. That'd be funny as fuck. One hundred percent buying shit that people do. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's another um like a few art things I've seen on TikTok that go viral, which you could do, which is like the, you know the guy who did the buckets that fell over, the buckets of sand that fell oh, over. Yeah. You go, yeah, yeah. So that that's, went. That's th- um, Roman singer. Roman singer. So that went mental. And most of the narrative was like, how the fuck is that art, right? Like, what is it? Because people didn't understand it, right? Or anything about it, right? So it was, they were like, what the fuck? Like, the way you could fake that with like your students, like you do an art, you do just some ridiculous art thing. That is cool, but it's just not real. Like you just made it up some stupid shit. And you have all your students stand around and just clap as it happens. 
and then that's the video and you put them out and then people are like wait what why yeah. all these people care about this but it's actually just you guys like taking the piss but the but you could do it where it, some of it is actually cool and like and again you have that dichotomy of like sometimes it's bullshit sometimes actually this is a performance or a piece of art that we actually really like and you see what the commentary is about and after a while if you hold the joke long enough people start to realize oh this guy's actually really fucking clever like he's really yeah, fucking clever what he's doing that's yeah, the project that becomes your art project is the, the this channel yeah nice um yeah that guy um the reason that roman singer is famous is because he used to put fireworks and real explosives into really precarious situations so <laughs> he'd like come just fucking running really fast out of a tent and then it would just go <laughs> it's real <laughs> Yeah, no, like, and so that, it's, it's really cool, like, it's really, really cool stuff, um, and I think that's part of the reason it's really funny as a social thing, because now he's older, he's not going to go running out of the tent anymore, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, um, that's cool, uh, thanks everyone, I, I think, uh, I, I really like it, I'm just going to, yeah, let's mull over it, yeah. let's mull over it, let's mull over it, and, uh, let's do somebody else, do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's mull over it. Let's um, we'll find some references as well on some things, and then we'll pick it up again and just see where we're at. But it's definitely one of those ones that you need to sit on because it's like there's so much complexity to it as well. There's so many ways to get it wrong. I, I do. I think that the stealing the student work thing, it is still another thing. It's quite interesting because like there's probably as many artists as there are. There's as many disgruntled students that feel like that was stolen and sometimes it is true and sometimes it's actually that the student is kind of very accidentally copied so yeah. yeah it's quite interesting quite tricky it could be quite interesting it could be quite cool for your students too like if you build up the channel and it goes then they'll probably want their art stolen you know because then it pushes them as well and you use it as a platform to put mm -hmm. your students artwork on blast exactly yeah, yeah. like actually helping them but like saying that I'm <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Who wants to go next? Who we'll go next? Okay. Yeah. Let's go, Barons. Okay, where are you where are you guys sitting at the moment? And your heads? Uh, we're in the kitchen. No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, in terms of your campaign, where do you think you you are? <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. 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 We got some input from our staff as well. We have got a little list. Cool. Um. So we got like Tintin. Oh yeah. I guess it's more the characters rather than specific sort of yeah. movie or TV show. Uh, Parks and Rex. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, it's sort of sort of deep pan. Is it funny or is it? Yeah. Are they being serious or are they being funny? Um. Life Aquatic. I mean, mostly all of Wes Anderson's kind of movies, really. Um, and of course, sort of Indiana Jones, that sort of, um, you know, he's that sort of um, suave -ish sort of adventurer sort of part of it as well. Adventure time? Yeah. Um, Sides of Sleep, it's not a movie that some people aren't that super familiar mm -hmm. with, but it's kind of a surrealist sort of movie with a lot of sort of fun stop motion animation in it. Um, Somebody threw out high school, one of our staff members. I'm not sure what that says about us. Comes into it, but <laughs> that is a sense, a sense of childish fun, I guess. Yeah. Um, and we've got Royal Tenor Barnes as well. And then, like, accounts, social accounts we're looking at. Um, like, Donut Daddy. Yeah, but that's about, that's about. We wouldn't do that, but... Tell me... Um, oh, yeah, keep going. No, keep going. And as far as kind of, I mean, the whole Willet, Willet sourdough, Willet blend kind of thing, we were thinking all the lines of Willet caramel would be quite a fun mm -hmm. um, avenue to go as far as content as well. Um, yeah. Okay. So showing the sort of the weirder stuff that you could do. As far as caramel base, which is something we think we could be capable of, 
yeah. yeah. Putting together as well, some sort of content along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. And like, how yeah. often do you um, try different flavor profiles and like play around? And what does that actually look like, I guess, mm. if you do do it? Uh, if it's like a product that's going to be a real product. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, how do, how is, what's your process like? What's your process like? Uh, yeah. Well, of course, everything we try and work on, we want to be able to sell. So it's generally a process of, is this going to work? Yeah, we're pretty sure it's going to work. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. Um, whereas I guess the Willa Caramel thing would be, let's find something that's definitely not going to work, but it will be fun to watch. So it would be very different processes, I guess. Yeah. But generally, um, when he's making something new, we do a, a monthly truffle. So something new every month, then, then that's just started. Um, otherwise, what well, we bring out a new flavour every year. And then we'll do, we've got our Taxigo range, which is kind of his best flavours, limited editions. And we might do three of those a year. Mm. And they would usually be tested maybe five times. Yeah, but in between that, like as far as stuff that we're experimenting with that doesn't come to market, it doesn't happen really that often that we do stuff that doesn't work. So we're thinking more with the content, it's more interesting obviously for people to see stuff that probably won't work. It's probably more entertaining. Mm. And so that, you know, rather than seeing stuff that, oh, that worked, wow, amazing. Yeah. Like, not so entertaining for people. It's, um, it, it, it depends on, like, it's uninteresting if things work because it's obvious that it would work, but it's when they work when you're like, there's no way that's going to work. And then it does, it was like when um, Sid did the curry sauce on ice cream, mm -hmm. and then it was like, wait, actually, this is fucking good. Like, why mm. would curry sauce on ice cream be good? But it was. And it was just because ice cream's just cream. Like, and it just put cream yeah, into, yeah, a, into a, it's cream and sugar into a curry sauce. Of course it was. It's just, you don't think of it like that. But, so it can go good if you're like, this shouldn't work. But then it does. Well, you should always sort of do things that you know might have a chance of working as well. Sort of mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the, the guys at Jia Pado in Auckland, they, they've been doing some stuff as well with ice cream. They like spreading ice cream on pepperoni pizza, or mm. it's kind of like a, a, will, a will it work scenario. Um, they've been doing stuff like that. And I think some of the stuff has been working. They're like, oh, actually, that was pretty tasty. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Do you do like food science experiments? Like, yeah. Kind of like reminds me of, like, not even just the taste of it like putting two tastes together like the visual aspect of a science experiment and what that looks like, like bubbling exploding melting freezing like all of that kind of stuff i'm not sure set up wise though eh? you're thinking of the whole set like a crazy scientist yeah, sort of thing it has to, if you're gonna do it you gotta do it properly yeah, yeah, and then you need, you need a full set you need a full set i guess the thing with uh with caramel it's quite a sort of visual yeah you know, it's a lot of bubbling and sort of mm. yeah yeah so it's a bit of a situation going on in that and you know, the changes over time so it's cooking it's quite visual yeah i think the will of caramel is great idea i think it's easy to do and it's an easy one to get started like it's just about getting the right look and feel and cadence of it to yeah. get it right yeah and i think trying to find consistency in how we in the production yeah how we sort of put it together um i mean we've got a little bit of experience in video production um but we don't really have much kit as far as sort of as far as our iPhones, really. iPhones is enough. Um, you don't need more than an iPhone for the series, I don't think. It doesn't need to yeah. be anything too flash. And it doesn't even really need to have voice. Like, it can just be visual. It's like, as, yeah. as evergreen content, do you guys do, like, I'm assuming you guys cook in decent batches or like make in decent batches, like just satisfying videos. Like, yeah. you just stationary cam and like you pouring into a pan. Or, um, yeah, yeah, like, like the candy boiled any, candy yeah, stuff. Any anything that you guys do process wise that is visually satisfying, you just have a stationary cam, you film it, and then you could do a compilation of all of it, or you can do just one slow mo or whatever, and that 
as just the thing that always goes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm completely gone separate. I'll go. Yeah, 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 ASMR. Um, yeah. What if you did, what if you did, Um, you know the ones where they get like a hot iron ball and they put it on stuff and see oh, how fast yeah. it is? What if we did melt, like, what will caramel burn it? Like pour hot molten caramel on stuff and watch it. See if it burns. Watch it melt. <laughs> will it burn? No, but like, there's this like, um, there's a whole series of people, right? You know what I'm talking about, yeah. where they get like yeah. stuff. They will just get everyday things and they'll put like a hot iron ball on it and let it just sit through yeah. and people just watch it. But you're doing it with yeah. your chocolate or your caramel. The caramel obviously gets the boiling. So it's obviously really hot and like you just tip it on stuff that you know has a low melting point. So it will melt away. Ah. And it's just a visual thing, but it then also showcases the caramel stuff just as like a you're talking about evergreen content now which is not necessarily big campaign yeah it's not the big campaign idea it's like the supporting content to go with the campaign yeah. right so like for instance yeah. you make this caramel that you know is going to be a weird like will it caramel and then you can utilize it like in a satisfying yeah. video to lay it out or you can burn, like melt stuff with it yeah. <laughs> or like can i cook fried chicken with my caramel <laughs> reheating our lunches because there's not enough microwaves <laughs> Just like, um, yeah, okay. this is kind of stupid, but. It's called um, Red Hot Ball Experience. Yeah, Red Hot Ball yeah. Experience. Yeah, they go off. Yeah. They're kind of like the hydraulic press ones. Yeah. They're the same thing. Yeah. It's the same right. content style. Um, uh, 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 content maker, Red Hot. So. Yeah, Red Hot Ball Experience. Red Hot Ball. <laughs> it sounds uh, like something else, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the um something that Donut Daddy would do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the one where they got yeah, Pepsi lemonade. Yeah. Pretty weird, wonderful, and attention grabbing. Just yeah, he's just yeah, man. What the what that sort of capacity of production, you know? Um, yeah, it just seems that kind of yeah, that well, well, that caramel kind of scenario. Rod's got an idea. Yeah, we can sort of look at and see how these sort of the format that they're using to put it together and, and sort of the style, so we sort of try to find our own style. So, sort of, and obviously it's a content style that people are familiar with as well. Yeah. Have you seen that one where people, so the perspectives from from us and we can see the different flavors of drink or chocolate and random people come up and they try a sample and they try and match it with the flavor. Ah, uh, yeah. I see that for like Pepsi like and- Gamify it. Yeah, and they just try and match it. I just looked at your your guys' account and all the different flavors, and then I don't know that you could set that up at a market. You could set that up anywhere. Trying to, try to guess the flavor. Did you did like? Do you know how things that have got a real thin coating of chocolate are amazing? Like, can you just dip shit like a burger? <laughs> so it's completely what? you know, like a mallow puff. But it's actually, much, yeah. Rather than a mallow puff, it's like you just dip really random food. Because it's yeah. fucking amazing to they dip. They make it. those. <laughs> Like, like, mm -hmm. like fried chicken that's just got a thin coating of yeah. cold, cold chocolate on it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, dip a burger, KFC, like the other way around. Like, yeah. just actually dip and coat yeah. food so it's like totally coated in chocolate and then you eat it. Yeah, you can do no, that. I, I, I think you've got to do uh, yeah, yeah, fish and dip. And then, uh, like, again, the fish and chips. And then, dry. Yeah. And then, like, chocolate. That is funny, too, what Roman just said. Like, because it's the opposite, right, of the deep fried Mars bar. What? It's. Well, yeah. fish and chips do a deep fried Mars bar, and they're going to do a chocolate fried um, fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, your reward is a chocolate fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that kind of content with you, I mean, would it just be a whole visual sort of scenario? Or I think, I think, I, um, I think what we we'll, we should do as a team, like our team, is come up, find some references for you on how it should look and feel. And I think they, yeah, I think both the Willet Caramel and the Chocolate Dipping, you just do both. Like, they're both great. And if one works, it's good. Like, like if you think about uh, Hercules with its, Hercules Noble, who did the Willet Sourdough, right? Who essentially, like, started this trend of Willet do something. Um, his is, that's just one style of video that he does. But he has all this other supporting content around it. And so, I think, like... This video is like our, what we call fan acquisition content. Like for us, if you watch our content, it's the um, presentation videos that we do. 
where Joni presents to me. Like that's our fan acquisition. It brings all the new followers in. It gets lots of viewership. But it's all the supporting content that really does the heavy lifting for us. You know, like it actually does. It sells the the company. So we have this first visual style campaign. We have two of them. We play them off each other. Maybe three. Maybe we still then do some satisfying videos because they can also go off as well. And we start off that. We get the visual styles. We keep iterating until we get it perfect. Get one to go off, and then once that goes off, throughout this eight next eight weeks, we then think of okay, how do we? What's the supporting content around it to like sell the rest of the actual brand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's the whole sort of what a caramel or what a chocolate type is here. The same thing. It's just really acquiring new people into our funnel. Yeah, um, I'm not trying to sell them anything. Nah, um, maybe a mark or a, um, yeah. You know, something you want to show your friends. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But I guess with the caramel thing, I mean, it could be possible that we could maybe either give away the product as well as sort of another sort of loop in, possibly. Like, in, in store, possibly, like, you wait to come in. I definitely, you the, definitely sell it in store. And you say, we've only got this much of it. Like, that Daz is cooked from Ashby Pies. When he does a when he does one of his pies as an experiment, right, and he does it, and then it goes off on social media, and then he'll only have two trays of those pies, and they sell out the next day, and he's like, "That's yeah. all they're they're, they're usually gone by eight a.m. the next day. They're like yeah. always gone. So you do the same thing, and that just brings people into the store because they go, "Oh, I've got to yeah. try go get the thing that just went viral last night." Yeah, I mean for us that'll be I've been trying to lift up our retail store. Yeah, the process has been pretty fantastic. Yeah. And just that brand awareness too of people going like, oh, this is actually something I can get. It's not just cool to watch. I can actually get it. And if you, if it yeah. does, if you did have a flavor that went bananas and everyone's like, get it, maybe that's your next flavor, right? So now you're co-creating with the audience of your new flavors that you're going with. You, you've suggested them because they're yours that you want to make. But then if they do go yeah. off, now you're like, okay, that's our product. That's our how a whole product innovation pipeline yeah. is now owned by yeah. the consumers. Yeah. Yeah. Let us come up with some visual styles because I think all three or all there's a few good ideas there. We just need to find out how to show you how to make it so that it works right, and then um, and then we'll take it from there. And then as we go through this next six weeks or whatever we got left, we'll um, make sure we we really need to make sure you've got more supportive content because I think all these are like no talking, which won't sell the characters like won't sell. Yeah, yeah. What's well, kind of yeah. some of their brand? Sort of with the whole Baron has a hot character, like mm. you don't see his face, you don't hear his voice. Scenarios, I think with the content, it'd be good to sort of follow that sort of tension as well. It would be quite funny if all the experiment stuff is all Baron and it, like you don't see him. He's got particular gloves on, or his particular hands that you yeah. know as Baron's. But then, like all the other content, supportive contents, you guys like his, you know, his little helpers. Mm. So you're like, oh, yeah. look, the Baron's busy today, but like I'm going to be doing, showing you some other, you know, whatever it might be. But the Baron never talks. Yeah. 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 yeah fun. That's fun. Nice. Yeah. As in, like, on the supportive content, it might be more on the supportive content. I don't know if it's too geeky, but it's more along the like, why do things taste good? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? What are you looking? Because you're saying you don't make any big mistakes with flavors, right? Obviously, because you know what you're doing. So, like, what are you looking for in those combinations? And also, time limit. Because I don't know if there's, like, if there's enough like trends of you know those crazy like vanilla ice cream and olive oil. And it's like, why does that taste good and work? Did you see that? One? No. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost like if you took your pre-existing flavors and you made like a series. It's like, oh, what if? this and this had a baby what would yeah. it look like and then you it's like the and then you make the chocolate and you're like it was yeah. like this yeah. and it's like it's actually a product wall yeah 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 it's like the guy who did the what if you told the ai to mix imagine dragons with blah 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 yeah. and then a song like and i told my ai to do this thing and then it's made the song and the song was epic but it was actually yeah. just his song that he had made yeah. so you get like social yeah. hack it too like we asked ai for a random chocolate flavor and it came out with this thing and here it is and it's actually just one of your flavors yeah. but you do it as a social yeah. hack yeah yeah you can take sort of trending topics as well mm. and try them in like you know, Trump being convicted with um, Nicki Minaj with his song, or I don't know, like, some sort of... <laughs> yeah. That's funny. And, like, what would the packaging look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's quite funny. Yeah. That's quite funny. Like, well, I went to Megan. Hey, I told us, like... <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. Yeah, letting AI dictate our chocolate company. 
Yeah. Well, just this one specific part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it kind of kept that topical thing that's what it is in the zeitgeist yeah. that way for that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let us come back some styles. I think we've got some on the wool at Caramel and the, and the other ones. We need to find out how to make this both look good and be easy for you to pr produce, that you can produce it often so it's not a burden. So we'll, we'll, yeah. f we'll figure out some styles. Yeah, we'll get some, yeah. with some visual references for it. Cool. Good. I like it. Nice. All right. Who's next? We've probably got enough for at least one more person today. If not two, we'll see how we go. Is that your hand up, Nick? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Let's go. I'm good to go. Dave, Let's go, I'm Nick, Dave. Feet. Awesome. Let's um. Ready? Where are you guys at in terms of thoughts of who got any ideas? Where you want to be? You... They're in the study. They're in the study. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the kitchen. So I had a um, um, obviously for us it's uh, slightly slightly more difficult uh, difficult I think on social media because we're B two B. Um, it's not business to consumer. Although our customer behaves like a consumer uh, to a certain extent. Um, but I, th I thought, um, so on social media, there's one company that I think does a pretty good job, which is uh, HubSpot, um, just in terms of um, what they do on social media, and they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, and part of the content that they also generate also helps uh, from like an education, uh, like educating uh, type role. Um, but something that I thought in terms of like the types of content that uh, we could uh, uh, do in terms of like a, a theme, um, and this is going to sound very cliche, but like a Lord of the Rings um, type thing, like where we're on a journey to like build really cool tech and at every point we, you know, we get caught up and, uh, um, you know, there's epic battles between competitors and those kind of things. And I also just feel like the a relationship that I have with Dave where I often come to and I'm like, ah. Oh, Dave, we should do this, and Dave often has to be like, you shall not pass, and you're not doing that um, kind of thing. Um, but I also feel like that's potentially been uh, like quite quite well uh, like um, documented on social media. Um, and then the other thing that I have is, uh, like, I love Will Ferrell, um, and the idea of, uh, like, Anchorman, but not necessarily Anchorman, but, like, our rather than the news team assemble, like, tech team assemble kind, kind of thing, and, like, do some kind of funny thing around, like, zooming into, like, one of our uh, product managers who, uh, um, you know, uh, is working on a product that works 60% uh, 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 of the time uh, every time, for example. Like, you know, those kind of, like, silly things. Um, that we could uh, 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 kind of play on. Um, yeah, so those are the types of like initial thoughts that I had around how we could potentially uh, uh, tackle it. Um, yeah, do, do, that's you, do you guys work from an fine. office or you work from home? Uh, we're fully remote. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah, okay. And how far se uh, separated are you guys? Quite far? Uh, Dave's, Dave's in the Mount and I'm in, uh, uh, um, I'm in Auckland. Oh yeah, so pretty far. So you'd have to do it like sort of virtual if you're going to be the characters, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mostly we have one office day a month. Uh, most of the teams are in Auckland, so we, yeah, we could. Do it for me in Auckland. Yeah, okay. Um, the adventure is hard because they're not together. <laughs> yeah. To do it regularly, eh? Yeah. Um. It reminds me of like was it called Little Egg or something like the board game company? Oh no, I haven't seen it. I have to find it, but <clears throat> I just got an idea. It's completely different to what Nick just told us. So, but is um just real practical, like finding and finding a creator and take and following the journey of them setting up with you and actually making shitloads of money. Mm. Like and just document like so giving them the whole thing for free to be your talent, but they're also a creator. So they've got an audience and all the, all the decent creators have other creators watching them. So they're going to have an audience of people that you want through it. So we find someone in the right demographic and it's like, how do we help them facilitate their business growing? Cause there's a, like a real, e like it's not necessarily clickbaity, but if you do it the right way, it can be. And just like from a, cause you are right, Nick, it is a kind of a B2B product even though the, the the other side of the B is like a creator and 
whatnot and they kind of don't think of themselves as big large organizations <clears throat> but if you could just like purely show people like no like you know this creator they're doing well and we've just helped them do even more with what they got by using this platform what if what if it was like you took already like huge creators like not people that were ever gonna make our clients or whatever just huge like uh this is the app that i would make for mr beast or this is what it would look like if i made an app for blah 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 <coughs> or going on and getting the apps that they already have yeah and this is what i would change or like this is like, this is there's a YouTube channel of a, a girl, a graphic, des like a UX UI designer who redesigns all of the big famous websites and stuff. Like, yeah. she just recently did Spotify. She's done IMDb and Facebook and all that, like how to make them better. And they go off on YouTube. So it's a similar concept. Yeah, I had a similar idea, which is like um, favorite features, which is like, just like going to like a big app like that. Like I was using the Wim Hof one this morning and, and like, yeah, just like zooming in, like talking a little bit, and then talking about the one little bit you like. But that could be a spin on it, just like, and this is what we, you know, what would, we would do. Yeah, um, yeah. And what you're doing for that, like, the reason why she gets so successful, if you read the comments, is um, everyone agrees with her. Yeah. She's just taking common things, annoyances that people have of over these apps, probably has just gone on to their reviews and gone, yeah. this is all the things people hate about this, and then she's changed That's them. That's all the UXs. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that is. Of course, yeah. it is. It's, it's in the name, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like just finding Ask things the users, and fixing them. How the experiences and then solve the problem. Yeah. So um, it's not like easy content to make. It seems easy because you're just sort of screen recording and voiceovering, but like the editing process is hard to make it um, engaging, and like you'd kind of need. Like I would say you'd need an editor to do something like that quite good because it's not, it's a hard, like, we, I don't know if we could do that really well in our team. Like, I don't know if we've got the right editor for that job. Like we'd probably, well, maybe Don, Don could probably do it. Yeah, Don. Don could do it. But it's not an easy editing job to do, to do those things, but it is cool. Like they do work. I've seen heaps of them. I've seen heaps of people who do this. Like the girl who did the M&Ms, you know, that girl who does um, redesigning uh, corporate logos or corporate brands as if they were like premium brands yeah, 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 yeah. turning them turning, like she made M&M's into a luxury brand yeah, like a Louis yeah, Vuitton-esque yeah. thing and so she takes like everyday brands and then like repackages the whole branding guidelines into like a luxury brand that she goes off that girl yeah. uh, and her one those are those are quite cool but you're doing it on your in your end where it's I'm taking this pretty average app and making it good or I'm taking this design feature that I think is cool and I'm scaling it up or, I don't know, it's kind of like my, like my only reservation um, was that is like, would you, would you want to like get permission from the person whose app that you think is pretty average? And like the reason I say that is uh, like just thinking about what we spoke uh, when we were discussing Roman's uh, use case, like we, on social media, we're non-existent at the moment. So, like, if we come out and we already start critiquing apps, um, like, my worry is that, like, uh, I don't know if we've necessarily earned the right to do that yet. I don't think you're critiquing them. I think you're just trying to make it better. It's different. I think it's, it's different. also different because art is subjective, whereas, like, in user experience, like, if I can't press this button and it doesn't do the thing, like, everyone is annoyed. Like, that's not a... That's a universal thing. And you'll look at... You could typically look at the reviews and go... The reviews and say oh, <laughs> you can look at the reviews and say people are actually mad at this app for this thing here's how i would fix it as a team yeah i mean like imagine if you had hopped on and you did the les mills app before they redid that yeah. thing oh my gosh that thing was terrible yeah i mean they did really well with acknowledging the fact yeah. that it got a one and a half stars on google ratings or apple ratings or whatever it was but you know taking that like taking the worst rated apps on the app store and what would you do to change them? AT Hops app is so AT bad. Hops app, is, is it even an app? It's like, like yeah, it doesn't even feel like an app. It's it just, it feels like a fucking 1982 spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, literally, it's so clunky. You know, like taking, so like taking the worst rated apps and making them better, that's kind of funny because that's got the hook already. You know what's quite cool is like even apps that aren't well known, kind of like the guy who takes the signs around streets and makes them better. Like he makes people's posters 
better. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's like dog walking or whatever, and it will be just someone had written it in Sharpie, and he'll take it down, but he'll make a fully designed like dog walking for blah blah blah, and he makes it all nice, and then puts it in, back in the same place. But I wonder if he did the same thing for apps. It's like. Oh, I understand what the concept of this app is. Let me redesign it. If you want it, just let me know. Like I've got it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And the only issue with that this concept is the time, because it's actually not like you actually have to do the job almost. Like it's all designed, so you're not actually coding or anything. You're just doing some design stuff, and I'm not sure if that's really where you guys are playing in. So you'd have to figure out like where do you play in that process, and then the time it takes to actually do the change is also quite hard. So, I don't know, like, how do you guys feel about, if that was, because if it's not something you can pull off, then we should just park it and move forward and maybe it's same for the future. But, like, if you took the worst, let's say you took the worst rated apps on the App Store and then you were to make them better, more usable apps, it's not really what you're doing anyway, though, is it? Because you're really about monetization and better facilitation of selling as opposed to making the really best app in the world. Is that right or am I wrong? I, I think definitely you're right in terms of um, like trying to like review the uh, like the AT uh, um, uh, auto transport apps like that's not within our wheelhouse because we yeah. would never actually fix those apps like um, yeah. our niche would be specifically yeah. health and fitness or uh, like course led uh, creators um, so, so yeah the, the, Slightly the other challenge. Um, like the other challenge is like so we have like really really big name uh, uh, clients uh, that we uh, that we have built apps for, but we've also had to sign confidentiality uh, because they don't actually want other creators to know that they're using Vid app um, because obviously if they uh, if the other creators know that they're using Vid app they uh, get to have exactly the same app as you know like a huge big name brand um, so so it's also um, I, I, yeah, like I just don't know necessarily no. like how scalable that could be if we if we then took for example like the worst rated apps on like in health and fitness or the worst rated yoga apps um, um, and redid those um, like I think it could be a campaign but it would I don't know about the long uh, like the lifespan of that how long that would be on yeah. the um, on the first point around like identifying like a young up and coming content creator like that's an idea that Dave and I had already so the fact that you guys have also highlighted that I think that that's <coughs> definitely um, one that we can do and again like uh, finding a content creator we've already got some potential options that we can uh, uh, like we can get to work on uh, with them and as you said the easy thing with that is they're producing the content um, uh, which is great so, so so I think that's a win. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm just, I just don't know how, like, I need to have a look and see <laughs> how many health and fitness apps there are in the app store. And, no, and, I think um, you're right. I don't think yeah. the other ones are a good idea. Angle, though, like, if you did it around, this is stopping you making money, that's fine. The stop and make money, yeah, but you to experience stops and making money. You can do yeah. reviews on the apps by that, and it doesn't matter what app it is because it's all about like the things that stop you making money. Yeah, and it probably wouldn't be the app store. It'd probably be you go and find these creators yeah. and find their app. Yeah, but then you got to pay for it, go through it. Do well, it's not I actually, money. I do think it might like be a bit too much work. It's kind of like the Jennifer's idea of doing the group mm -hmm. of people coming for dinner. It's so it just it gets too hard too soon. Like it's not they'll give up too quick. Like they'll do one a month and then fuck it does nothing. Whereas like following a creator, you're right. Like you're you're working with them. You don't have to do a lot. Well, you you do. Yeah, you'd have to think about what lives on your platform, what lives on their platform. And because it's a lot about money. So what I would like, what I think would be good to do on their platform is like the. Um, if I could call it like the, the, the software and like the more content led stuff. And then on our platform, it would be like more of the technical things where we would then sit down with her and then be like, cool, so what's working in the app? What's not working? Um, like, what are you wanting to see? How would we change this? How could we potentially do this? Um, and then of course as well, I think from um, uh, the monetization component, like I think we need to be very transparent around like, cool. So like, so as of today, you know, Dave, how much money are you generating from your uh, your audience? I'm doing two hundred dollars a month, uh, and then like we documented where it goes from two hundred to a thousand, thousand to five thousand, five thousand to ten k, ten k, all the way up to you know we've got customers that are doing over a million dollars a month. How much does your app facilitate that 
growth as opposed to just um, or yeah uh, uh, as opposed to just facilitate the <coughs> delivery of the product like you know what I mean like do you guys actually does your app help the increase of revenue directly or is it just a byproduct of having a good app correct so, so um, our app absolutely does so for example we can build apps that allow people to have uh, trials um, where many other platforms you don't have a trial so the first thing that you met, uh, met is uh, with a login so you download the app and you've got a login um, where with our apps you can actually preview the app so from an acquisition uh, uh, perspective mm, it's really true. easy and then we build technology where that free trial automatically converts into a paid subscription so, for example, Kylie downloads the app, he browses it, and he's like, oh, this is interesting. He doesn't think about it. Seven days later, he's just paid his first monthly subscription of 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. A lot of apps do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, it, yeah. So you, the guys, have lost all this money, too. You built yeah. these apps for people <laughs> fucking forgot about them. Like 400 in the hole. Um, if, if it's any constellation, our, our North Star metric is user engagement in our apps. So, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. we care a great deal about people actually using the apps, not just monetizing them. <laughs> um, so, so, so yeah, like, but, but I mean, to put it very crudely, to put it very crudely, like that's, uh, um, that is um, like one of the ways that we make it really easy uh, to, to do that. But then uh, like there's other things that we can do in terms of, um, like just better features, you know, offering very unique and bespoke features, you know, so like uh, um, uh, people that want to have a like a, a, a 21 day ch uh, challenge or, or like a fitness challenge, a 60 day challenge, like we have a specific feature, a calendar feature where that challenge gets programmatically put into the calendar. So like Roman logs onto his app and he doesn't have to think about what is next. He's already been prompted on the next video that he has to do and he's got to follow the, uh, the, the course sequentially. You know, like those are the things that are like really, really important that drive adoption uh, and engagement in the app. Um, so we build specific features, and again, like we built a community feature. So now, content creators can actually own their community um, and not rely on a Facebook community group or something like that. It's actually in their app, and they own it, and then um, you know they they can moderate and facilitate mm. uh, uh, discussions that are a lot more focused. Um, yeah. Um, like like that. So so. Um, I think I think um I think with like where my th thought around the following your creator building it, the concern I have with it is that there's two parts. If this creator's smaller and you're trying to build them up to do it. It's, you're, it's still really reliant on them pushing people into it so then you can then do your thing in the app and so that if you have a too small of a creator then the, pro the, the outcome is not that significant if they don't play their part well enough and so you're leaving too much of your social media strategy in the hands of them which is a bit of a shit fight because what if they just don't play like they get two months in and they, don't, they can't be fucked anymore and then if you get a really big creator um, like I'd be surprised if I mean, you could do it if you got a big creator. Let's be honest. If you got a big creator, if you got someone big enough, it's, it's going to work. So if you could find someone big enough, fine. I'm not <laughs> sure if it's. Is we've got yeah. huge creators. Like we've got huge creators that have got like millions of followers. Yeah. There's no ways they would want to do anything with us for the specific reason that they don't want people to know uh, that they uh, that they use for that. I'm not saying that you'd get someone that you've already got. You'd have to find someone new and take them through the whole journey. And then that, and their their whole thing is that you guys are potentially not going to monetize at all off of them, right? But you're going to monetize off of all the audience that will come through because then now they all see this big creator using this thing. Mm -hmm. And then this creator is like, the benefit to them, you'll have to find someone who's willing to go, you know what, fuck it. Like, I'm going to get this whole thing done for me, which I'm going to be able to make money out of. Yep, people might be able to steal my, like get the same app off me later on, but I'm still making money. I still got this thing that cost me nothing to do. If they're, if they're really making, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month, are they really going to be that, that mad if they got it all for free? Probably not. Your current one's different because they've essentially paid you to do it, right? Like, technically, they've paid you to do it. So then they're like, yeah, you better be confidential because, like, that's what they paid for. Yeah. But these other guys, you could probably, I, I wouldn't, I could probably find your creator. I'll, I'll tell you right now, I can find your creator that I know who would pick it up. 
they might not be big enough though. That's my worry. Like you, ne- you do need a big creator to make this really land, because it's only really cool if you're like this person. I'm going from zero to a hundred thousand a month, in you know x amount of days to make this work. So, anyway, my thought process is let's park the idea right now because I'm not sure if it's the straight if it's the right idea. I just threw it out and then we're going and we're going around in circles. I think it's something that we keep because if we can find the right creator, fuck, it's a great strategy. Like, it's a really good strategy. We just got to find the right creator. But let's think of other stuff because let's go back. Like, you had this, like, comedic um, office environment thing. Zoom calls or team calls or whatever are a very funny trope at the moment. And given that you guys are a distributed team, there's definitely lots of ways we can do this. Yeah, like... um uh, I, I like the idea of like bringing bringing a little bit more of a uh, like internal team um, environment and you know like just doing uh, kind of like you know um, what I think HubSpot does really well is like they'll take like a uh, something which is trending on um, uh, like trending on TikTok for example and then they'll like they'll turn it into like B two B. Um, and generally like in some kind of like funny meme type way um, and I just find that like that's uh, like really like quite funny um, and relatable in terms of like we're we're a business and we're selling a business uh, we're selling two businesses um, you know we're, we're not trying to capture a consumer market so so I think our play um, our play is is trying to then make ourselves a little bit more like accessible and that's like, hey, like we're just a bunch of like normal human beings living in the middle of uh, a, a tiny island in the Pacific Ocean, um, building cool stuff. Um, One of the um, tough things, like I've seen HubSpot stuff before. One of the hard ones of HubSpot are using, and this is for everyone to actually think about, like when you use these big brands and you look at them, like HubSpot, right? HubSpot's got millions of users across its user base, right? It's massive. And so like it's instagram for instance grows huge because of that user base like there's a real natural thing to follow a company that you actually use as a company Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not it's quite easy to convert people into it um and then if you look at them on tiktok like they're nowhere near the same following on that thing because the one it's not as old of a platform and you can look at the videos of theirs that perform and don't perform the ones that perform are all paid for like you can see it it's all had money put in behind it because the engagement's not there for the amount like one's got like 20 million views and 12,000 likes or something like it's just nowhere near what it would be to get to that so you definitely know it's a a paid for approach and so then you take what you're saying Nick is you're taking this like funny trend and you're making this b2b play on it well the views on Instagram it gets because it's got 500,000 followers and Instagram still has its feed page is still very much follower based so it shows you who you follow so you will of course get viewership if you've got 500,000 followers because you will see their posts. You go to TikTok and it's like completely different because TikTok doesn't have that same feature. Well, it does, but it's not the default feature. The default feature on TikTok is to watch what you're interested in and therefore the viewership doesn't go. So it tends to show you that actually people don't give a fuck about that style of content and you're only getting any sort of viewership because you're HubSpot, right? It's like Nike can put out ads, well, ads as nike does them which are brilliant but nike can put out something that's not super entertaining but it's cool and people watch it because it's nike you know and hubspot is just a brand that's so familiar and understanding they're like they'll they'll get enough viewership just for that but you take you guys as a brand no one in the world knows really who you are relatively if you do it it'll just be a bunch of white guys cringe as fuck on social media <laughs> not being offensive but like it's really hard to pull off that style of content really good like you've got to be fucking good to do it and honestly like we've tried and we're not good at that that level of um, content you need script writers and show writers like you need someone who understands how to pull that joke together which is why we just had to hire two show writers in our team to get people who understand to make that level of skit and I worry if they, that level of skit is like a little bit too hard to do when actually maybe what's an easier thing to do is like um, the the thing that's relatable with you guys as opposed to the, the app that you make is that you're a distributed team. Like that's a, that's a really relatable thing for a lot of people. So what are the POVs or the jokes or the things that you can do in that space? 
or um, just using Teams and video calls as a thing. Like, like I saw that they on the HubSpot one. I was just looking then. They have that guy who does. You know the guy who does the um, he does the customer service calls. They've oh, used him as their influencer. That's one of their best performing yeah. ones. Where you're doing like a customer info, oh, like a customer service call or something like that. I just think there's something there that those aren't B two B jokes. Those are human jokes, like how to interact with other people, as opposed to like the company itself. Because no one gives a fuck about Vidap, to be honest. Like no one cares, right? But they will care about you guys as people first and foremost. Later on, they might care about Vidap as you build the brand up. But for now, they'll only care about you guys. So how do we have the human interaction of funny, relatable yep. shit that happens between you guys as a team, and maybe the power dynamic or I don't know, like there must be some dynamics in your team that are quite obvious tropes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just um, the two of you are easy I, I've to just shared, I've, Like I've shared another one. Um, uh, so Corporate Bro, um, I don't know if you uh, uh, if you guys are aware of him, but like he, he, he uh, being in the sales game, like he just oh, takes yeah. like the piss out of uh, yeah. sales where like he'll reenact yeah. uh, um, like a sales call and people telling him to, you know, fuck off on a sales call and uh, like sales managers yeah. uh, asking how they're doing for month end quota and those kind of things. Um, and and like I think I think from uh, from an engagement perspective, um, he does pretty well. I mean, he's got um, uh, yeah, he's got a pretty good uh, uh, yeah. social media following. Um, he's great, this guy. Yeah. Right. yeah, he's great, this guy. I've seen um, him before. Yeah, 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 he's um, uh, so so like my, my, my kind of like uh, thinking around that was like doing something kind of like this as well, where it's like the human element of like you know me going to Dave and being like, hey Dave, customers ask for uh, like purple spotted unicorn uh, UI uh, in their app, and then Dave being like, what do you mean? Like we can't do purple spotted unicorns, um, you know. And for me to be like, well, I've kind of already sold them and promised that we're doing purple spotted unicorns. Um, so like, we're going to have to discuss that with product. Those kind of th- yeah, I don't know. I just what thought what uh, those kind of things. do you have anyone in the team who's like a bit of a comedian, like a proper comedian, not a clown, but a comedian? Like good, quick banter. Like they're real fast at coming back at you, real witty. Like you say a joke and they instantly got you straight away. Do you have anyone in the team like that? I'd say maybe Adi. Uh, Adi's pretty sharp. Um, that then, tells me no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that tells me no. Because um, you'll know, right? You'll know. Like, in our team, Sam's like, fucking, boom, gets you straight away. Like, he's real ready, uh, witty. The The reason I ask is that, like, that type of humor, you need that type of brain who understands, like, who can get the joke. Because otherwise, it comes off real cringe and it won't work. And you'll just look like middle-aged men doing shit content. It's because we know so much about the world and how other people live and everything. Yeah. They've, they've got this whole catalog of how people live an, across whatever. That when they make a joke, it always lands. Because yeah. Because they've done it. It hits a human truth every single yeah. time. It's why we just hired Curls and Busky in our team as yeah. the show writers. Because they're the same. They just got this idea. They just see stuff like that. I would say if you want to do this style of content, you probably want to look at like a creator to come in and help with that piece because that is it will fall flat so fast. Otherwise, like that level, like corporate bro or that level of dialogue humor is real hard to pull off. Whereas if you're pulling off like POV content, it's not quite as hard. It's not as hard to write the script out because it's just a scenario. In fact, really good. POV style humor is like meme content where the first frame is the whole joke. So like the first frame of the video, you could have just made it a picture and posted it and people would get it because it'd be POV, this thing happens and the visual is the thing happening. And then the video is only longer to fully explain, you know, just to hold the joke longer, to be honest. That sort of content is way easier to pull off than a full on dialogue battle between people having a relatable scenario or like what that corporate bro guy does because... I mean, he's, he is a comedian, like he's fucking talented as shit. So like, if you want that level of content, cool, but you definitely need to get a, get a creator who can help you make it. You, you it'll just fall flat. Um, otherwise I, we suck at that until we hired, well, Sam can do it, but Sam's, that's not Sam's so sure. He shouldn't be doing that, but we just had to hire two well, guys. No, we, we did have all, I think quite a strong emotional reaction when you said, oh, you know, we just take the 20 bucks from your account straight away and forgot to uninstall the app. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, 
something about that dynamic, which I think <laughs> if, if you could capture it. How does it stand one or one? Kind of, you know, you know like it's basically point, point of view, point of view, uh, you know, um, yeah. you're next asking you to uh, like just take more money from the customer's account or something, you know, like it needs to be actually that. Yeah, thing. yeah, I like it. It's, it's. Can you make the button bigger? And actually, can you make it deduct more money from their um, account than they've signed up for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, I like it as well. That's kind of funny. It's a good dynamic. Like, one of them is just trying to rinse the customers, the other one is trying to protect the customer. Yeah. Still getting the, um, if you do that in dialogue jokes, you still need the joke writer. Like you definitely still do it. Cause like, otherwise we would have just pulled that joke off right now and done it, but it's quite, um, oh, there's a spare battery there. Um, what you could do though is take that same thing and how to do it as a meme style content, like the POV sort of meme style content, which is easier. So if we really want to get into this humorous stuff, there's, I think there's two options. We like design a strategy or campaign that's around meme POV style content, or you guys will want to, you'll have to invest in someone who can do that. They're not super expensive. Like you can just get them for one day a week, hire a creator who's a joke writer, pay him for a day a week or a day a fortnight to come in and brief. And like, we can show you in this process how to write a brief for them to then come in and do the joke writing, right? And then you guys can do it, but like, Trust me, it's not easy. That like, yeah. otherwise, if being a comedian was easy, you know, like it wouldn't. They yeah. comedians wouldn't be famous because everyone would be funny, you know. So, <laughs> just 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 not true. The, the 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 other idea I was thinking around the content creator side is like, what happens if we did something like a Survivor or a Hunger Games type thing, where we actually get like a whole bunch of, and I mean, like it's easy for us to get a cohort of like five or six like aspiring content creators that are like relatively small Wait, this could be cool. and we say like you know as a technology partner like we'll give you the tech for free this could be cool like, like <laughs> i like uh, this this is cool yeah. i just watched um, max fosh or whatever his name uh the big youtuber do like the how much money i can make on wall street with his other mate and they're like sold lim one sold lemonade one sold girl guides cookies you know but it was like a super entertaining so it's like how much money can you make so if you get 10 of them put them against each other yeah. they make all your content about day one of trying to win this competition yeah that would be so good that's you do risk because if you just do one influencer like yeah. simply, if they just fall off then that's a disaster whereas if you do five they will try different things you see what works you could share people could subscribe and follow along just to i reckon we can find stuff. the people that would be awesome yeah. yeah yeah i like this one this is a good one I oh, like yeah. it because you're now you're getting across a whole bunch of people's socials as yeah, well yeah. and yours you, you you say to them you just give them a directive that they each have to make you one piece of content for your socials a week as part yeah. of it and you're giving them all the tech partners and then you pick 10 of them and then yeah i like it this could work and then like um you gamify the, the, the winner gets um i don't know like at the end of it like if we run it for six months or a year or something, like the winner then gets vid out for free for the rest of their life. Um, you know, something like that. If you found the right creators and they all got you, let's say, let's just pretend you had 10 creators and then each of them just got you another 10 big creators to sign on. How much money would you make off those 10 big creators that signed on? The new, the new 10. Um, like just a ballpark. Uh, 50, 50 to 100 grand a year. Yeah. yeah. So like, I wonder if you set a target for them, like they had to achieve something. So you de-risking yourself, but you actually just put up a $10,000 prize. Like you legit just put up a $10,000 prize and you actually paid it out after six months or something. You know, you actually did it. But you guys go in with the idea going, this is a marketing expense that we're going to do, but I'll only pay it if you get to this, at least get to this level. Or you even have it as tiers of levels. Like each time you guys get to this as a group, this much gets added to the prize pool, like two grand, two grand, two grand or whatever, you know, so until you get to 10 grand. Mm. And then yeah, so kind of like 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 Squid Game. Yeah, you know, like it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and then like people, you know, uh, influencers aren't uh, uh, participating, get killed off. Um, 
you know, it just gets like... Yeah, and you can have uh, challenges where, like, if they don't, like, yeah, like Survivor and Squid Games and stuff, and if you, in this month, if you don't reach this thing, if you're the, the worst, then you pop out. You and if, it Squid App. Squid App. <laughs> Redesign it all, that's funny. <laughs> that could work, because now you've got this gamification, and you've got 10 people with their own audiences pushing the thing to drive in the... But, like, there's a... There's a trick around 10,000, right? The number 10,000 is like really uh, psychologically taps into people's heads. It's like, I mean, it was one of the reasons why when Mr. Beast's first big video, when he gives $10,000 to a um, homeless guy, the brand only gave him five grand and he's like, nah, I can only do it if you give me 10 grand. And he's like, why? It's like, because it's the only way it's going to go viral. No one cares about five grand. It needs to be 10 grand. And then he was right. And it went bananas and it launched. Well, I didn't launch him, but it was one of his first big videos. But we see it all the time. If I put a $10,000 number in a LinkedIn post, fuck, goes bananas just because there's this weird psychological trick. So if you could actually as a team go, what would we actually need to make $10,000 worthwhile giving away? So it's got to work for you, right? $10,000. And then you, we design the whole thing and then we, we can help you find some influencers and you guys might know some as well that you bring on. Give them the free... You'd have to give them all a vid app for free whilst you yeah. do it, of course. That's fine. Of course. That's fine. But then you need some way of like having them find you more people. Yeah. You know? And then so what does that look like to get done? And you won't be able to make the prize contingent of them getting you clients. That won't work because people are like, fuck off. But you'll have to know, if I get to this amount of followership and viewership or something like that, you'll have to know that clients will come from that. Like you just have to have the understanding. I think just them doing it because these guys, it's quite the first part. These guys are all connected. Like they all have little last line groups and they all know each other. So I think just like doing it would bring in enough. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. We could even help facilitate that here, like in Auckland, like with all the guys that we could do it as an Auckland-based thing and get people who actually know each mm-hmm. other and can come see each other. Mm-hmm. There's enough people that we know who could probably bring that together for you. Mm. that well maybe we could have a look at it anyway we can we can explore it we can explore it I think it's yeah. a good one we are at 10 at 10 a.m before just before we can close um Vanessa's just going to talk to you guys about the community yep go for it yep yeah. so we'll close off that we are just and just on that um uh, we are going to close off that that's it next week we're going to keep doing the same thing please come ready all the rest of you and think about everyone else's ideas and if you want one like theirs or you're happy with yours Yep. All right, Vanessa, Vanessa all yours. Hi, everyone. How are you all? Good. Great. Thank Good. you. That's awesome. Um, just moving forward, I'm, I'm, I'm always uh, thinking ahead. Um, and we want to keep you guys all engaged and all talking. So after we finish with cohort, I would like to know from you guys, where would you like to keep the community going? So we can still keep on exchanging ideas. You guys can keep on getting to know some more insights. Um, I usually suggest somewhere where we could do some polls and things like that. So uh, think about your phone, like where you could access easier. Um, So if you have any suggestions other than the usual like uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, um, I'm, I'm very open for suggestions. You guys just drop a comment there on Teams and then we can carry on. And then all the future cohorters can can join us in as well after they are done with the second, third, fourth cool. cohort and wherever we go. Okay? Cool. Awesome. Good to see you all. Cool. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome team. Well, yeah, don't forget to put that in the Teams chat and use the community, and then Vanessa will tally it up and figure out where we go from that point. Otherwise, thanks for today. Um, Keep thinking of other ideas, and those of you who have got ideas, let's start to bring together some visual styles. We'll have a look ourselves and bring them to you next week, but just you've got some ideas in your head now. Go out and consume some content with intent to find some stuff that you want to watch or want to create, right? Yes. Cool. All right, team. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Cheers.